hello, come in. Come in, oh dear. Look at this, this picture's all gone and almost all the bookshelves gone, almost all the books are in boxes now, except um, the ones I'm immediately working with for this article on Allegory and the Inklings. And uh, I haven't yet done the, the GK Chesterton and the um, Bellock and so on. Um, come and have a seat. Well, we've also just discovered that our um, removal men, our removal guy was pinged and then is now unwell. So our actual moving day is now uncertain <laughs> anyway. We may be living out of boxes for a day or two. So, anyway. Well, I think this will be almost your last visit to this study. But I hope you'll be able to find your way to the little house in Norfolk. Anyway, today... Today is uh, the 22nd of July, which is a special day for two reasons for me, not unrelated. It's a special day in the church calendar because it's the feast of St. Mary Magdalene, who is, of course, the first witness to the resurrection and the, the person who Jesus greets in the garden in the morning and who, who, who rushes off to tell the disciples and thus becomes a kind of apostle to the apostles. Uh, uh, a really vital role in the whole history of the church. Um, so she's an amazing person and she's, uh, you know, there are different Marys in the Gospels and some of them have got sort of conflated perhaps, but so there's a traditional so that she's a person who who was, uh, you know, had been uh, deeply troubled and possessed of these seven devils and that Jesus healed her and that she, she bathed his <coughs> feet with her tears. And um, some people think she's also the Mary of Bethany that broke open the alabaster jar of ointment and anointed his feet. So great person. And um, it so happens that Ma Maggie and I both um, um, have quite a sense of who she is and her importance as a woman in the gospel story. And so we decided when we got married that we would get married on Mary Magdalene's day on the 22nd of July, which we did in 1984. And that 22nd of July, happened to be a Sunday. Maggie was the deaconess at the local church and I was a lay preacher. So we decided to get married just during an ordinary church family service as part of the service and it was lovely. So today is our 37th wedding anniversary. Anyway, happily among the books that are not packed are a couple of volumes of my poetry. And I thought, just in honour of the day, it might be nice to read you first a poem about Mary Magdalene herself, and then some poems I wrote for Maggie, both for the wedding itself and for a couple of the anniversaries. Anyway, here from, from um, this is my reading copy of Sounding the, Sounding the Seasons, it's a hardback edition of it. But even so, it's starting to fall to pieces now. It's got rather grubby, but... Reading in the sense that I take it out on poetry readings, which I haven't done any of for a year and a half now. St. Mary Magdalene. Men called you light so as to load you down and burden you with their own weight of sin. A woman forced to cover and contain those seven devils sent by every man. But one man set you free and took your part. One man knew and loved you to your core. The broken alabaster of your heart revealed to him alone a hidden door into a garden where the fountain sealed could flow at last for him in healing tears till in another garden he revealed the perfect love that cast out all your fears and quickened you with love's own sway and swing as light and lovely as the news you bring so that was my poem for uh, mary magdalene now um in the singing world 
I've got a section called, um, after a title by Lewis's, called The Four Loves. Um, and um, in it, I have a little sequence of poems for Maggie. But here's a poem called The Ring. And you can see it's dated 2207, 1984. And I actually gave it to Maggie on our wedding day. Join hands with me and step into the ring, shining in white with flowers in your hair. The word himself will give, you, give us songs to sing and move the hidden voices of the air. Here in his garden, where he laid his treasure and came himself before the day was dawning, here where he gave a gift beyond our measure and Mary's footfall echoed in the morning. Here he will raise us up and quench our thirst, setting upon our happiness his sign, as at his bedding in the wedding feast, waters of cleansing reddened into wine. Then we shall turn to him with joy and sing, whose love surrounds us in a golden ring. And then the next poem on this one is dated 2207, 2011. So um, uh, that must have been the 27th wedding anniversary because this is the 37th and it's 2021. But I'll read it as for the 37th because I did write it for the 27th. And again, it refers to Mary Magdalene and her being the first to bring the news of the resurrection and being in the garden and all of those things. Uh, I wrote this particular poem because I realised at that point that um, because it was the 27th anniversary and I was 26 when uh, Maggie and I got married, that I had spent more of my life with her than without her. And that seemed like a significant thing to notice. So anniversary 2207 to 2011. Again, we celebrate our patroness who brings us both the news of resurrection, who finds the garden in the wilderness and finds in love an unbroken connection, as we did 27 years ago, walking together through an open door into the garden where we both still grow, where making love is always making more. More of my life is woven in with you than all the life I had before we met. More to love and cherish, tried and true than ever, there were sorrows to forget. Therefore I bless the winter and the rain, for in his garden love is come again. And then I'll just read you one more. Um, when I became a parish priest in Huntingdon, or in Hartford, a little uh, suburb of Huntingdon, it was a very beautiful church by the river, a beautiful medieval church. And lots of people used to get married in it. You know, everybody who could possibly have a reason to get married in that church got married in it. And so I did lots and lots of weddings. And I started to invite the couples back. Uh, I thought it'd be too complicated to do it on everybody's anniversary. So I picked Valentine's Day. And I used to have a special Valentine's Day early evening service so that people could then go out to dinner or whatever. And I would invite all the couples whom I'd married in the previous years to come back to the church where they got married and just renew their wedding vows. And Maggie and I would you used to do the same. And it was a sort of beginning of Valentine's evening. So <clears throat> I wrote this poem about that experience of renewing vows. And what this poem does is it takes certain words. If you look at the poem here, you'll see certain words are in italics, like I take, protect and comfort, cherish, have and hold. It takes the words which we repeated from the service and sort of makes them new. So I'll, I'll uh, just finish this little section because I've then got to put all these books in <laughs> boxes or some of them. A renewal of vows. So... Open up the treasure casket, love. The treasure is still there. The hidden things that love contains. Old words, like wedding rings, surround their mysteries. They live and move as breath renews them. Burnished as the gold around our fingers, glowing as we make the vows that make us new again. I take, protect and comfort, cherish, have and hold the same old words that cannot stay the same, for they have grown as we have, more than old. 
They change and deepen, like all things that live. They compass more and still have more to give. All that I have is yours. All that I am, I give again, with all I will become. So, perhaps a little bit sort of romantic interlude on Mary Magdalene's day. Um, and then <laughs> we return to the never quite finished task of putting our lives into boxes in order to take them out again somewhere else. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs>